This podcast is an introduction to erosion and deposition. Our objectives are that you'll be able to define those terms, define what erosion and deposition are, explain the causes of mass movement, and name and describe types of mass movement, including rock falls and slides, slumps, mud flows, and creep. So first off, what are these things? What are erosion and deposition? Erosion is the process by which natural forces move sediments from one location to another. So erosion removes or moves sediments. Remember that weathering is what breaks down the rocks to make the sediments, and then erosion moves them. Deposition is the laying down of sediments once the erosion is no longer able to carry the sediments. So uh, the way I like to think of it is erosion removes and moves the sediment, and deposition adds it. Deposition puts it in another place. A good example is um, when a wave goes out and pulls sediment along with it, that's erosion. And then when the wave comes back in and deposits the sediment back on the beach, that's deposition. So what forces cause these? The type you're going to learn about today is mass movements. Wind. and then water, which comes in many different forms. We have groundwater, which as we've seen during weathering can make caves. Then we have wave erosion and river erosion on both small and large scales. And then there's frozen water in the form of glaciers, um, which you've already been introduced to from the Ian Stewart video. And we're going to spend probably the most time on glacier erosion. But let's start with mass movements. So their movement of rock or soil down slope due to gravity. Now the other types of erosion are related to gravity as well, like a river moves downhill because of gravity, so does a glacier. But mass movement just happens because of gravity. But it can be sped along or triggered by water. So if water saturates the materials at the surface and makes it easier for them to move, like after a heavy rain or a snow melt, that can trigger a mass movement. Also over steep and slopes. So if a stream undercuts a valley wall or waves cut away at the bottom of a cliff, or if human construction makes slopes too steep, that can make mass movements happen. It can also be, be triggered by the removal of vegetation. Plant roots hold the soil together um, so plants in general combat erosion. So if you remove those plants, that increases erosion in an area. And then finally, earthquakes. Um, the shaking of the earth can be the thing that causes the landslide or the mass movement. There are several different types of them. Um, the first is rock falls. So that's going to be where rock falls down fairly vertically. Then we have rock slides, um, when the rock slides down a hill. This one is slump. This is my favorite. Um, here, the chunk of sediment sticks together as it slides downhill. Then we have mud flows. These are often the most destructive. Um, so a mud flow is much more liquid than the others, so it has a lot of water mixed in with the soil or the sediment, so it moves incredibly quickly. The picture you're looking at right now is many years after the mud flow, um, and this is after the eruption of Mount St. Helens, a volcano in Washington State in the 80s. The volcanic ash mixed with great quantities of water, and the resulting mud just flowed incredibly quickly down the side of the mountain and buried a lot of things that was, was in its path. So mud flows are the most destructive type of mass movement. And then finally, this is the slowest. It's called creep. So on the left, you see what it looks like. So it can cause this kind of creepy looking forest. Um, or just things that are kind of leaning in a funny way. And on the right, it shows what happens. Um, so as the soil freezes in the winter and then thaws in the summer, over time, the soil is going to zigzag downhill, 
Remember that um, water expands when it freezes. So when the water in the soil freezes in the winter, it'll expand. And so a grain of soil might expand. And then when it contracts again, when it thaws in the summertime, it'll move downwards a little bit. So over time, very slowly, you have the soil just zigzagging down the slope very slowly. It's slow enough that trees, for instance, have a chance to kind of um, adapt to it by growing in this curved path. So it's the slowest one. So let's do a quick um, check for understanding. I'm going to show you five pictures, and I want you to figure out which type it is. Number one. Two. Now this is the result after this event. Three. My hint is look at the fence. So this is what we're looking at. Number four, you might remember the old man of the mountain, um, which is still on the road signs in New Hampshire. Um, so this is what it looked like before the event. This is what it looked like after. And finally, number five. Okay, let's go back and see what the answers are. Number one is slump. You can tell because the entire chunk stays together. Number two, this is a mud flow. You can tell because it was very liquid when it happened, which is why the car is buried and not crushed. Um, so mud flow, you can tell because there's evidence that it was really liquid when it was moving. Number three, this is creep. That's why the fence is leaning. Number four, this was a rock fall. And then number five was a rock slide or landslide. And the way I can tell this is it looks fairly dry. So this was dry sediment, dry rocks. Um, you'll notice this beautiful glacier up here. So we'll learn about glaciers later, but I just noticed that in the picture. Anyhow, this one is a rock slide or rock fall. If you have any questions, let me know when we have class next.